now. Now, Karen, tonight in the debate, we were able to hear a lot more from each candidate about where they stand on different policy issues, not as much as what we heard in the first debate. So what were some of those issues that stood out tonight to you? And what were some of the candidates that stood out in their overall answers? Well, first of all, I think Nikki Haley did an absolutely excellent job. She actually answered the questions that were asked, whether it was about foreign policy, education, health care. And she really demonstrated that she had uh, a real um, sophisticated understanding of the nuances of the issues. Uh, Ron DeSantis was certainly uh, making the effort to run on his record in Florida, but there were certain questions like he would talk about foreign policy or China and he would bring it back to immigration, which is one of his pet, uh, one of his pet issues. Um, Doug Bergram did um, an admirable job of trying to get attention when he was on the wings, but also was not being uh, he was not given as much opportunity to answer questions, but he would um, attempt to, to, to do that or to interject himself at, I think, strategic moments. He didn't try to do it all the time. Um, I also think that it was pretty interesting that there were two targets in this debate. In the last debate, there were a lot of people who were um, calling uh, Vivek Ramaswamy on the carpet, and we saw some of that going on tonight. But also the fact that there were four different Republican candidates on the stage who attacked President Trump or criticized his policies. When before, you know, he was he was sort of the third rail, right? <laughs> Touch him and you die. Well, I think clearly that these candidates are trying to attempt to uh, to differentiate themselves and to put themselves forward as an alternative to Trump, and but also to kind of say that that the Trump record is not something that is off limits. Um, I also think it was fairly apparent how unpopular Vice President Pence is. Uh, he had some great one-liners that absolutely fell flat. They should have been great audience lines. The very first one was, you know, uh, the, the quip about putting Biden on the unemployment line. That was sort of a made-for-applause moment and nothing happened. Um, and there were other oper other t times when that happened. And, um, you know, there was just very little response to him. So I, I think that that demonstrates that there's a lot of unhappiness within the Republican Party with yeah, the former vice president. Definitely. And to kind of just quickly bring it all back to Iowa, what is some quick key things that Iowans should take away from this debate? <laughs> Well, I think that um, we really saw some differentiation between the candidates in terms of their command of the issues, but also what their pet issues are. And so this really helps inform Iowa caucus goers about, um, you know, to be able to find the candidate that they think really has the strongest position on the issues that are most important to them, whether it's education or whether it's um, trans and LGBTQ issues or uh, parental rights or if it's immigration, for example. All right. Well, thank you, Karen, for staying up with us tonight. We appreciate your insight.